Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special A Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. It's the day before the day we've been waiting for, because tonight is the last show we'll do during the presidency of He Who Shall Remain Shameless. Now, we could tell immediately four years ago that enduring this administration was going to be a challenge. This is what I said in my first monologue after his election. Was it four years? Four years? We got four very interesting years in front of us. I might have undersold that just a smidge. <laughs> it has been interesting in the same way that riding in a car going over a cliff is thought-provoking. But tomorrow, like a miracle, he will disappear. Some of the highlights of his lowlights include starting his presidency by decrying American carnage, his Muslim travel ban, very fine people on both sides, bonding with Putin in Helsinki, bonding with Kim Jong-un in Singapore, bonding with the MyPillow guy everywhere else, wanting to trade Puerto Rico for Greenland, talking about nuking hurricanes or changing their path with a Sharpie, calling the 26 women who accused him of sexual assault liars, wishing an accused sex trafficker well, caging asylum-seeking children that he tore from their parents, getting impeached for trying to blackmail Ukraine to interfere in our election, completely shanking a pandemic, tear-gassing peaceful protesters, holding a Bible dumb, undermining faith in our democracy, inciting an angry mob to murder his own vice president, and ruining YMCA. And that's, that's, we didn't even try hard for that list. We just like, we only, it's only an hour show. But the weirdest thing of the last four years might have been in, it was year one, right? When he was at the National Boy Scout Jamboree and he told a story about a rich guy he knew who had a yacht and something about something that sounded like a sex party on a boat. It really summed up the last four years. You didn't exactly know where he was going or what he was talking about, but it made you feel dirty and you knew it was not good for children. But as painful as the last four, really five, really five years have been for America, I could argue that knowing how bad things could get was in a way worth it. And I would be lying just like he does, because according to the Washington Post Pinocchio lie tracker, since assuming office, the president has made 30,534 false or misleading statements. In the end, Pinocchio threw himself into a wood chipper. I'm free! In the end, the takeaway from this presidency is take him away. We here at The Late Show have been counting down to this day for four long years, literally counting. Now, you may have noticed that when we were in the theater, there was a number in the back of the dome. And that was the number of days till the end of the president's term. And we counted it down every night for four long, painful years. And tonight, the number on the dome has counted down to one. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. what you say? Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. Hit the road, Jack. Come on, Jack. There's a road. Hit it. Throughout all the craziness and threats to everything we hold sacred, there was one hero who kept our country together. And that's you, the American people. For all of his dangerous assaults on democracy, in the end, democracy kicked his ass all the way back to Florida. And in this case, I, for one, will never be sick of winning. So you should be proud of yourselves. Count among your accomplishments this year, stopping homegrown American fascism and hitting 10,000 steps just walking between your fridge and your couch. You, you, the American people, you held your ground. You never warmed up to the guy. Even when he won, he lost the popular vote. And according to Gallup, his average approval rating was 41%, four points lower than any other president. He's so unpopular, this is how he'll be remembered in the Hall of Presidents. 
What a schmuck I was. What a schmuck. <laughs> now, if it sounds like I'm making a big deal about him leaving, it's not nearly as big a deal as he wants to make about it. The president wants a big military send-off at Andrews Air Force Base with a red carpet and a 21-gun salute. And this time, the guns aren't aimed at Mike Pence. But it's been a challenge getting a big enough crowd to satisfy the president, in part because, according to the invitation, all guests must arrive between 6 a.m. and 7.15 a.m. A party at 6 a.m.? Awesome! For the least popular man on Earth? Sweet! Hey, tell you what, you throw in karaoke machines that only play Ice Ice Baby, and I am in. Now, reportedly, the White House is so desperate to have people attend this pity party that it invited Anthony Scaramucci to the event. Scaramucci? What are you doing? The Mooch is clearly a season one character. That's if, like, the Happy Days reunion was kicked off by Richie's brother. That's right. Richie had an older brother who played basketball, was very tall, and then disappeared with no explanation. I would check Potsy's crawl space. <laughs> now, the email invite also told guests that they can bring as many as five plus ones to the president's elaborate exit ceremony. Man, that is thirsty. Uh, hey, uh, uh, you guys please come to my improv show. Uh, I'll get you two for one coupons that's good for five people. And they don't have to be people. They can be cardboard cutouts or mannequins or dogs or brooms with googly eyes. Please, my parents are coming. Now. After the president leaves, they're going to have to hose out 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, an undertaking carried out by the 90-person White House resident staff in about five hours. Come on, that's a big house, and they only have five hours to clean it? That's insane. It's going to take at least an hour to pull Eric's head out of the banister. Hell! Hell! I'm in head jail! Tell Dad to pardon my head! Some nights have too much saliva for Eric. It won't stay up. I'm not going to miss him. With every day that passes. No. Well, no. we learn more about the MAGA militia that attacked the Capitol, but now we're also learning about their arrests. So it's time for my hopefully 10,000 part segment, Seditionist Roundup Roundup. Seems like the cow's in on it. Seems like the cow is into it. That doesn't seem fair to the cow. First up in the lasso of justice is local trader and woman realizing she should really touch up those roots to look her best in jail. Jenna Ryan, when she's not breaking into the Capitol, Ryan is a real estate broker from Frisco, Texas. Ah, that explains why the riot smelled like fresh baked cookies. Makes it seem homey. Well, the feds didn't have to dig too deep to find out who she was because this is what she live streamed during the attack. Here we go. Y'all know who to hire for your realtor. Jenna Ryan, your realtor. Kind of a weird place to promote your business. You never heard a Confederate general shouting, the South shall rise again against Northern aggressors, but what shan't rise are my super low prices on hard tack and buckles. Stonewall's general store. We validate horse parking. Charge! Ryan continued to scream vertise. You guys, can you believe this? I'm not messing around. I will, when I come to sell your house, this is what I will do. <laughs> what? Break windows and fill it with white supremacists? And you can turn this into an accent wall with just a simple can of pepper spray. I brought some color swatches. Ooh, I like eyeball volcano. Mmm, sinus meltdown. Now, we can't solely blame the president for inciting the stupid, stupid woman because apparently she also listens to other sources. Not just the president, you know, there's also, I follow everything that Rudy Giuliani says. Finding out the woman in charge of contracts for your home is taking advice from Rudy Giuliani is like finding out your dentist is taking advice from Rudy Giuliani. All right, let's start with a red wine rinse. And what do you say we replace your lower row of teeth with feed corn and cigarette butts? <laughs> Elsewhere in the Roundup Roundup, authorities have arrested Maryland white supremacist and man who made the wrong choice between mustache and beard, Brian Bettenker. Based on a tip, the suspect was identified in a social media post, but it also helped that on January 6th, he was out on parole.
for a totally different crime and wearing a GPS ankle monitor that placed him at the riot. Clearly not the sharpest tool in the shed, which is too bad because he could have used that tool to cut off the ankle monitor. Now, the feds have also arrested Texas guy Guy Reffitt, who you might remember from being pepper sprayed on the Capitol steps, but he stood his ground. It reminds me of Patrick Henry's famous words, give me liberty or ah, not the eyes. Ah! Reffitt was tracked down by the FBI after footage of him was seen online. And it's a good thing the FBI just tracked him down because before his arrest, he warned his children, if you turn me in, you're a traitor. And you know what happens to traitors. Traitors get shot. Sometimes, sometimes they just get pepper sprayed on the steps of the Capitol. We got a great show for you tonight. Star of Our Friend Jason Siegel is here, but when we come back, meanwhile, join us, won't you? Thank you.